Alrighty, so this will be a discussion of compound inequalities and absolute value inequalities, which are basically different types of applications of inequalities, um, but to solving things as opposed to just plain old a single inequality. Uh, the one thing you have to remember throughout both discussions is that if you multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, you have to change the direction of the inequality. So if it's less than, it becomes greater than. If it's greater than, it becomes less than. If it's less than or equal to, it becomes greater than or equal to. If it is greater than or equal to, it becomes less than or equal to. And then the other stuff I'll, I'll try to weave in and review as, as we go along. So first we'll start with what is a compound inequality. There's two types that we care about or that we're going to talk about in this course. One is an or and the other is an and. With an or statement, either of the two inequalities can be true, and the overall answer will work out. With an and statement, both have both conditions have to be satisfied. So think of this as if I had said, you, you must go to the beach, or you can go to Publix. And you get $5. Now, if you go to the beach and come back, you get $5. If you go to Publix and you come back, you get $5. If you go to both, you still get $5 because you went to at least one or the other. But what happens if you go to neither of them? Well, then you get nothing. So or is you can do either A or you can do B. You do have the option to do both A and B, but you do not have the option to do neither. Or means you have to do one or the other. And is a lot easier. You have to do both. So if I say you have to go to the beach and you have to go to Publix and then you get $5, if you just go to the beach, you don't get the money. If you just go to the public store, you don't get the money. You have to go to both. So both inequalities will need to be satisfied instead of just the one with or. So uh, we'll do one question with both, uh, with ors and with ands. So let's say we have 2x minus 5 is greater than 3, or 4 minus x is greater than or equal to 6. So what we're trying to do is figure out for which values of x is either this first one true, or is the second one true. Or maybe they're both true at some point of time, but that's what we're trying to figure out. For what values of x, what values of x can we plug into either of these two inequalities and get a true statement out of it? That, that's the major idea. So what we have to do is solve them independently, just like we did previously. If I had just given you one of these two inequalities, you would solve them both just as two separate problems. And then we'll use the word or at the end once we graph the, the results. So the first one on the left, 2x minus 5 is greater than 3. 2x, we add the 5 over to the other side. 3 plus 5 is 8 and then we divide both sides by two. Notice that I'm not going to flip the direction of the inequality because we're not dividing both sides by a negative. We're only dividing by a positive number, which is fine. So if I divide both sides by two, I get x is greater than four. I'm going to put that aside for a second. Now I'm going to solve the other side, the other inequality. Four minus x is greater than or equal to six, so I'm going to subtract the four. I get negative x is greater than or equal to 6 minus 4, which is 2. Now, in order to get this x by itself, we have to get rid of that negative in the front. So either I can multiply both sides by a negative 1, or I can divide both sides by a negative 1. Both will, will do the job. But in either case, no matter what I do, I'm dividing or multiplying both sides by a negative. And when that happens, we have to change the direction of the inequality. So this will go from negative x is greater than or equal to 2 to x is less than or equal to negative 2. Now the important part is, if you want to do this in a foolproof manner, you must, must, must graph your results. All too often, students try to memorize their way out of this. It, it, it's a terrible, terrible thing to try to do. Don't do that, please. So first thing is, plot the two numbers that you got. So negative 2 is on the left. We plot that there. 4 is somewhere here. This doesn't have to be, you know, super duper precise, like negative 2, negative 1, 0, and so on. It, you're, you're just, you care about the numbers, and that's it. You don't care about 
specifically where they are in relation to each other. First, we graph x is greater than 4. So that means if we pick a test point, say 5, 5 is greater than 4. That's a true statement. 5 is to the right of 4, so I'm going to run towards it. Open circle above the 4 because it's just a greater than, not a greater than or equal to. On the other side, we have x is less than or equal to negative 2. So I'm going to put a solid dot above it. And numbers, so let's say we plug in 0 as a test point. 0 is somewhere in the middle here. 0 is less than or equal to negative 2. Well, that's a false statement. So we run away from 0, which means we go in this direction. OK, let, let's recap so far what we've done. We solved this problem independently. The or had nothing to do with it. We just solved it as if we were solving a regular old problem. We solved this problem independently. Nothing changed. We graph both results on the same number line. So, so far, you'll notice I haven't touched the word or. I haven't done anything with it. Here's a trick of how to answer these questions or how I personally remember them. So normally you write covered with an ER, but if you misspell it, and you misspell it in this particular manner, you get this cool question, or clever question that says, what is covered from the rain? So imagine there's rain falling all over the graph, everywhere, from negative infinity to infinity. Rain does not discriminate. Where are you covered from the rain? Well, you're covered from the rain in this region. I should probably use some different shape. So you're covered from the rain in this region, and you're not covered at four because there's an open circle. So imagine like holding a hula hoop above your head. Well, the rain's going to fall through the hula hoop. Imagine this left side to be where someone is holding an umbrella above their head so they don't get wet. So we are covered from the rain. We always read intervals from left to right, from negative infinity Remember, infinities never get brackets, comma, negative 2. We are covered from the rain at negative 2, with the umbrella still there. So we include it. Now, the union symbol is mathematical glue. So whenever we talk about sets in or intervals in mathematics, we can glue two pieces of the number line together, or two intervals together, using this symbol. Uh, it's called a union symbol, so think of a civil union. It's two people coming together and living together legally. Union, and now where does the second interval start? Well, it starts, oops, starts at 4, but does not include 4. So we have to exclude it, and we go all the way to infinity. So where are we covered from the rain? Well, we're covered everywhere here, we're covered everywhere here, but this is where we're getting drenched. So this is not part of the solution. Now, what the heck does this mean? What have we found? What we have found is if you pick either numbers in this interval, so if you pick any number from negative infinity to negative 2, negative 2 included, one of these two inequalities will be true, will be satisfied, which means the whole thing works out. Because remember, with an or statement, only one of them has to be satisfied, not both. Uh, and similarly, if we pick a number in this interval from 4 to infinity, the same exact uh, requirement. One of the two inequalities will be satisfied, which is good enough for us. The thing that students try to memorize, and they memorize incorrectly, is that the moment you have an OR statement, it's going to be a union. Please don't do that, because I can give you a very short example and we'll get to it where that will not be the case. Uh, let's do an AND problem. Let me find one that I know is OK. All right, so this one is 2x plus 8 is greater than or equal to 5x minus 7. AND, so both inequalities need to be satisfied here. 5x minus 3 is greater than 3x plus 1. 
So we start this problem off the exact same way we solve both inequalities separately as if they were just one problem by themselves. So 2x plus 8 is greater than or equal to 5x minus 7. I'm going to add, subtract the 5x to the left side and then subtract the 8 to the right. which gives me negative 3x is greater than or equal to negative 15. The reason why I didn't flip the inequality is because we have not multiplied or divided both sides by a negative. We only switch the inequality if that happens. At this stage, we can divide both sides by negative 3, but now I have to flip the inequality. So this will become x is less than or equal to 5. Negative 15 divided by negative 3 would be positive 5. So we're going to put that off to the side. We've solved it. Now we solve the other side. Uh, five, so I'm going to move the 3x here, and I'm going to move the negative 3 to the other side. So 5x minus 3x is greater than 1 plus 3. Uh, 5x minus 3x is 2x is greater than 1 plus 3, which is 4. And then finally, divide both sides by 2. I don't flip the direction of the inequality because I'm dividing by a positive number. So x is greater than 2. Now again, we draw a graph, stick our two numbers in there, so 2 and 5. And then we graph both of them separately, but on the same graph. x is less than or equal to 5. So we pick a test point, let's say 0. 0 is less than or equal to 5. So we need to run towards 0. It's telling us the truth. Uh, let's plug in 0 again. 0 is greater than 2. Well, that's false. So we need to go in the opposite direction of... Wait, I want to make sure this is done correctly. Yeah. We need to go in the opposite direction of 0. So we start open circle here, and we go to the right. Drawing an arrow is pretty long because then I, I think a lot of students make a mistake because their arrows are not long enough. So at the very least, go all the way to the end of the number line. Now for AND statements, for AND compound inequalities, you're asking yourself for where is the sandwich? And you can think of visually a sandwich as two pieces of bread laying on top of each other. So here you're really looking for an overlap. Where do I satisfy the first inequality and I satisfy the second inequality? Because both of them have to give us a true statement. If only one of them is true, it doesn't work. If you have to go to Publix and the beach, you have to go to both. So in this case, the only x values that will work for both inequalities will be where there's an overlap or where there's a sandwich. So where does the sandwich start? Well, there is not an overlap at 2 because this inequality will not be satisfied at 2. So 2 is not included. But there is an overlap at 5. There's a point here and there's a point here. So we include 5. Please remember, when you're solving a compound inequality, the only time you use this word at the beginning is when you're interpreting the graph. Never before it, never after it. And when you interpret the graph, you need to ask yourself, if it's a compound statement with or, where are you covered from the rain? And if it's a compound statement with and, you're looking for the sandwich. You're looking for where there's an overlap of the two inequalities. Now, the two scenarios where students tend to make a mistake are the following. So I'm just going to draw the graphs, and then we'll interpret them. It, the, these numbers are immaterial. So let's say we have something like this and something like this. A lot of students will immediately write an answer like this and not pay attention to the question, which is wrong. If the problem says uh, two inequalities with an or in the middle, or means where are you covered from the rain? Then the answer would be negative infinity to 1, not included, union 3 to infinity. However, if for the same graph we have an and compound inequality, 
Then you're looking for, you're asking yourself, where's the overlap? Where's the sandwich? In this case, there is no overlap. So had we solved a problem with an and compound inequality and gotten this as the graph, the answer would be no solution. There is no value of x that satisfies both inequalities. So if I said, uh, you have to go to Publix and not go to Publix, then you get $5. Well, which is it? Do you go to Publix or do you not go to Publix? There's no overlap between the two conditions. You can only do one, not the other. On the other hand, if we have something like this, most students will just go for the overlap regardless of whether the word says and or not, and that's a common mistake. So if the question says and, then you're looking for the sandwich. Then the answer would be from one to three because both endpoints are included. On the other hand, if the question is or, now you're asking yourself, where am I covered from the rain? If you're walking on the number line from left to right, you're covered everywhere. Here, maybe there's like a walkway, and then here, you're still under the walkway, but now you have an umbrella as well. So you're covered from the rain in two layers, or you have two layers of protection. And then at this stage, the walkway ends, but you still have your umbrella. So you don't get wet anywhere. You can walk all the way from negative infinity to positive infinity without getting wet. Please, please, please make sure you understand that the graph has to be interpreted with the type of inequality you have. If it's an or, you're asking yourself, where am I cover ord? If it's an and, you're asking yourself for a sandwich. Where is the overlap? Just because you have a picture that looks like this does not mean that it's going to be an or. You can get that picture with an and problem as well. Uh, I think that's all I wanted to say about this. Let me take a look at the homework, make sure there's nothing here that I didn't say. Uh, one other note, I guess. So sometimes you might see the word and, sometimes you might just see or. Sometimes you might see something like this. This is actually shorthand notation for an AND statement. There are two inequalities glued in together. The first inequality is this one. So the first inequality is negative 2 is less than 2x plus 5. And then the second inequality is this one. So the middle basically goes first with the left and then once with the right. And the second inequality would be 2x plus 5 is less than or equal to 15. So this is called a tripart, the name's not important here, but it's called a tripartite inequality. But anytime you see something written like this, understand that it's an and compound inequality, that the left-hand side of this has to be true and the right-hand side must be true as well. And then you solve it the same way as we solved this problem here. You solve it the way you solved an and. Again, to rehash, I know I'm beating a dead horse here. Please draw the graphs first, then look at the compound word and see if it's or. You ask yourself, where is it cover or? If it's an and, you ask yourself, where is the sandwich? Hopefully that helps. I'll see you in the next video with absolute value inequalities.